Okay. So, uh, welcome everyone uh, once again. This morning we have the talk of Carl to start. Uh, online. Yeah. Now, welcome everyone. This morning, the second day of the workshop. Um, yesterday we had a great uh, series of talks uh, and it was very exciting and insightful for everyone. So I hope today uh, it's like the same. Um, if you have anything, any recommendation for today, like if the slides are not shown or anything you can see, just let me know. Also the audience online, send me a WhatsApp message because I'm not checking the email all the time. Um, so yeah, but let's try to make it as good as possible. Uh, and the last little thing, we need to get the tickets today for the grand, uh, the visit to the Alhambra tomorrow. So I'll brought another computer and I'll be seated all the talks there with the computer. You have to go to me and tell me, let's buy the ticket. So then I buy the ticket because I need to put your like passport information, QR codes, and lots of things because they request these things now for safety, COVID safety. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, if you don't go to me and like force me to do it, I will not buy your ticket. Well, I will do it well, only for people who go to me. Yes. I'll well, send you an email. Hmm? Or should, should be, or could you also send you an email with hmm. the data? Um, no, no, let's, 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 because I mean to so many things that I don't want yes, to be right. responsible for not having checked that particular yeah. email. So we have the whole day for doing that. So just take your time and coffee breaks. I'll be open to do it. But the ID and R2 comments. I don't know exactly. I have to. I haven't done the first yet. So once I do the first, I will know. That's why I need collectively help on on this. Okay. So now we start with the content. Um, we have a uh, Carl Sposin, um, uh, someone who has a lot of experience in uh, quantum theory and several other fields, and also as he has been uh, in um, connected to the Templeton grants. So and in origins of purpose research as well. So he's someone who has a lot of experience on these things and we hope to have uh, a great talk. And yeah, so the talks today, like last little thing to say, uh, let's try to keep it in 40 minutes ish. Mm -hmm. So then we can have a like a nice discussion and so on and, and we don't stretch it so much. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Carl, the stage thank, is yours. Thank you, Thomas. Yes. Thank you for the kind invitation. I'm really enjoying it here. This is, by the way, the first time uh, after the COVID outbreak that I am uh, in presence. I had uh, some conferences in uh, online, but this is the first time and I really enjoy it here. Uh, also talking to you in person. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I had some uh, uh, experience with the Templeton Foundation. I even went there, probably this is, uh, I shouldn't disclose that, but I even went to the headquarters and, and was interviewed uh, to get uh, um, to, to uh, uh, because I applied for, for, for their, their physics part, um, for, the, for, for the person who was in charge of physics. Uh, but, um, well, I'm happily doing physics uh, still. And um, at uh, some point I talked, I had a project uh, with the Templeton Foundation with, with some theologians, which was extremely interesting. And I enjoyed it a lot uh, talking to theologians because they have um, in many ways uh, thought about many things already that the physics community and the mathematics community and the system science com community has talked for a long time. They just wish they have given things different names. But for instance, they met the question of freedom, uh, free will, of sin and, and determinism. That is a very, they, these are very important questions also uh, to the theologians. And um, of course, also uh, when it comes to, uh, to physics and the debates. And we are still debating. I think, I think uh, from the onset of uh, modern enlightenment, we are still debating on if we are free and what constitutes our freedom and so on and so forth. So these are very, very interesting matters. And uh, I have been asked by, by Thomas 
uh, to give um, a rather survey talk, uh, not to go too much into technical details this community might not be interested in. Uh, so I hope I stick to that. Um, I have no really rigid plan, I have to admit. So if you want to interrupt me and have questions, please interrupt me and ask. Yeah? Because I, I consider this talk more um, um, some as, as conveying to you some ideas that, uh, that have developed in the physics community that may be of some importance. Um, just as, for instance, uh, this attractor business uh, uh, and uh, uh, classical chaos has, has developed from the end body problem. And it has been reformulated by the mathematicians to, to make it digestible uh, to them, you know. Um, and it had many ups and downs and turns uh, from the onset on. I mean, just point career and so on and so forth. So, so uh, this is an ongoing thing, uh, and uh, I like to keep it that way, and I like to keep the talk that way. And uh, I was just reminded. I was in, in 86, I was traveling to Moscow and uh, there I was uh, also with the FIAN, uh, that, that is the Academy of Sciences, and I was confronted with uh, Aprikosov. And Aprikosov said, in order to give a talk, you have to do two things to the, to the young students. You know? this, he said, well, first you have to make it simple so that everybody would say well this is a good lecture you know i understand everything i'm satisfied with myself you know and, and then you have to make it difficult uh, to impress the audience so so you 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 just change your presentation from the easy to the incomprehensible uh, just to make the most impact <laughs> but uh, i mean but one has to say that at here and also at Lomonosov University, they had this culture. Uh, I didn't experience it myself uh, because I was attending. Well, I, I didn't, I cannot speak Russian, unfortunately, but um, they have this uh, long, long, long discussions, you know, that, that goes on without end, you know. Um, and was very fruitful, I think, to the development of field theory there. Anyway, so uh, let's start. Uh, what, what can you expect from me? Uh, you can expect from me uh, some kind of new notion um, of or discussion of the physical property of complementarity when it, uh, and how it relates to system science. That might be of some interest. And, uh, and yesterday, I also discovered that there are much more topics that I've been interested in that I didn't cover in the preparation of my lecture. So I will start with, with, uh, with that at first and then go on to complementarity and contextuality. Okay. Yeah, Thomas? Yeah. With my Zoom. Ah. Because I'm using this other computer. No, it's, 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 not, it's not important because I will talk freehand anyway. Yeah, but the people ah, are they will they there. They have been signed out. Who signed out? Ah, so the talk remains, but I'm now controlling it from here, I guess. Yeah. I will I will just push the OK button. Yeah. It's weird because I'm a different user. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, what, what do you I do here? You just, uh, yeah. OK. So um, there, there was this, uh, you know, this issue of goal directedness and uh, the maybe the confusion in physics or the, the issues that, that have been discussed in physics with regards to, um, to, um, to microphysical reversibility versus macrophysical irreversibility. Yeah? So the, this, there's this age old question. I, I usually like to walk, so uh, I will walk out of this. The picture. Uh, anyway, so uh, there is this uh, this age-old question: How come you know uh, that you experience um, um, the lapse of time, a flow of time uh, in an irreversible way? You cannot go backwards. Uh, if uh, if uh, oh, and, and how come there is this uh, uh, 
these the, uh, theorems of statistical physics uh, that entropy increases and so on, if on the fundamental physical level, uh, there's only reversible, reversible loads. And, and uh, this has been discussed, of course, also um, in the context of statistical uh, physics, which I've mentioned before. And uh, just, just to name drop um, uh, some, uh, some, some names, it's called Loschmidt's paradox. You know, Loschmidt's paradox, the uh, Umkehr Einwand in German. You know, that time physics uh, was also discussed in German, and and, and Loschmidt mit the rest the Umkehr Einwand against the, against Boltzmann. He said um, uh, there is no way if you look if you look hard and on a microphysical level. Uh, how how entropy could increase, um, and, and this has also, of course, been discussed by by Maxwell. And there's a very nice uh, article um, by an American philosopher, Myrold, um, who uh, has an article on the Maxwellian uh, view of uh, statistical physics. I believe I've sent Thomas uh, the, the reference to that. It's in the Pittsburgh archive. Uh, and, and there he discussed this in entropy increase uh, and the few uh, Maxwell had. Maxwell, basically Maxwell thought that um, you shouldn't take the molecules individual. But once you do that, the second law of thermodynamics decays into thin air. So, um, if, if you look too close, too closely in, into the system, um, the, the second law uh, does no longer exist. Uh, and we see all the, the consequences that, that look hilarious from the physical point of view. Um, and there's also the Poincaré recurrence theorem that might be more interesting in the topic of this workshop here, because the Poincaré recurrence theorem tells you that eventually, after a long, under quotes, times, um, the, the, the system will be back at its original state. You just have to wait long enough, you know? Now, um, at that time, um, recursive function theory, the theory of computation was not developed at all. I mean, we know that this was uh, Klinie and uh, Turing who, who developed this. Um, so now we, we know a little bit better, you know? Uh, one of the points I want to make is that with respect to the Poincaré recurrence theorem, um, uh, one, one can say nowadays that you could have this scenario that the system may be back at its original state, but at an uncomputable time, you know, uh, due to the reduction of the halting problem. So for, for instance, I mean, that there was this, you know, this, this may sound weird to you, but in my opinion, this is, this is, uh, this is very relevant. Uh, there, there was this uh, Kronecker, um, uh, at some point, uh, gave his uh, assistants uh, some um, some uh, some task, uh, or they were discussing this. I mean, I, I think it's an interesting question on its own. Uh, if I give you a number, um, uh, you should find out a function that takes in the number as an input and outputs a very large number. And the quiz is the larger the better. So, so those assistant wins who uh, who finds the largest uh, uh, functional value uh, on the input of, of a certain number. And of course, we uh, the, the mathematicians we say, oh well, this was Ackermann. You know, Ackermann invented uh, as a as stimulated by this question. Ackermann was, I believe. Uh, <clears throat> the, the system, one of the assistants. There, there is also, by the way, uh, another uh, uh, researcher, uh, 
not, not so well known um, as Ackermann, who was from uh, Romania, who had, uh, even before Ackermann, uh, had a similar function. But uh, the Ackermann function is still a total function. So you, you can be sure that after a while you plug it in, you get garbage in, garbage out. You get something out, you know, no matter, very large. So, so uh, the Ackermann, and, and, and if you think of, um, uh, of a computer as a physical system that is subject to the Poincaré recurrence theorem, you can already say that if, you know, you consider a universal computer, need not be universal, but let's, let's, just, uh, let's just get rid of all the, the technical stuff. Yeah? Uh, if, if you have a universal computer implementing the Ackermann function, then maybe the system gets back after a very long time. You know, uh, uh, the, uh, John Bell would call it, for all practical purposes, infinite, infinite. You know, but for all practical purposes, of course, it's not, is not is not infinite, you know, <laughs> what the physicists call. Okay, uh, but now we know even better. We have worse functions. Uh, one of, uh, the, of the, the tangible uh, uh, worst functions we know, the others we cannot even grab intellectually or formally, is the busy beaver function. <clears throat> that is uh, the function uh, that takes in a number it outputs a very large string of um, ones and then stops. Oh, yeah. And um, so, so the, the output of this function is a very large number that, um, that um, of, of ones, let's say, if you have a binary encoding of the output, um, that. Uh, and, and, and the criterion is that it should stop um, because uh, it's very easy to, uh, to generate a very short program that, um, that um, um, would, would produce an infinity of ones, of course. You just enter an infinite to loop and that's it. That's, that's very simple. But the, but the issue is it has to hold. And then by reduction uh, to the halting problem, which is provable, impossible to uh, compute by any uh, universal computer or ICC or whatever of recursive dynamics, uh, you can infer um, that the first uh, functional values of, um, of this busy beaver function is still computable. So you will get some results, but you can prove that there exists no recursive bound on the functional value as a function of the input. So, so this is much worse than the, than the Ackermann function. You know, this is, this, this is actually, this, is, this, this leads you to uh, partial functions, that, that some functions have no, uh, have, have no, um, have, have uh, that, that some functional values um, may have no, no computable output. So this is not the total function. So, so this, this could, so, so basically uh, these ideas push the, um, the recurrence, the Poincaré recurrence to the uncomputable domain. But yeah, so, so, so this, is, this is an interesting aspect that I think even in the physics community has not been realized yet. Basically it says that um, this is algorithmic physics, so what, what, what Fontana uh, once had this idea of algorithmic chemistry, you know? And, and if you if you translate that into physics, you just implement a universal computer. Uh, just uh, for instance, the way the um, 
the Turing had in mind pay, paper and pencil. Turing had this paper and pencil operation, but then he developed to formalize that as a tape and so on and so forth. But, but if you implement that, you have the big fans. Uh, so um, coming back to the topic, the goal, if, if you have a goal that is um, purely syntactic, it may not be tangible, it may not be computable in a certain sense, you know, so this is, uh, this is uh, weird. I, <coughs> I, I say that just to confuse, uh, not, not to confuse you, but yes. Yeah, I, I think this is perhaps one of the points of your talk, right? The goals might not be computable. No, I, I just, it just appeared to me that one, that this could be one, one point that is important, mm -hmm. yeah? that this could be, and, and recursive function theory has something to say about this. Yeah, and on the other hand, just to, to bring this, um, there are people who, or there are things like emotions and things like that, that are kind of also incomputable, you know? Do you think that this connection is any any way meaningful, or these are two orthogonal ways of not being computable? Well, well, I, I would like to, uh, answer that this is a very interesting question of course for everybody personally because we have our emotions and these are important to us and yeah, one should, like theological like the existence of god or something yes. you know these all these things that no model can yes. grasp yes is, is it because we are bounded by yeah. the computational capabilities or if these are just two different things well i i would say that i i i give you an in a, a moving me metaphor shortly but um but my, my impression is that we have developed um, a framework of doing, of a syntactic framework that we not know since Gödel and Tarski and Turing is limited, provable so. I mean, this is, this is a very strong result, you know? We, we have provable unprovability. You know, uh, this is this is very very uh, this is a very strong result in it, and the, and and the, and the, or should I, a, a victory of this uh, of this approach. You know, so this is no no deficiency. This is uh, this is just great, but of course we have to keep in mind that the, that that the domain what what is uh, of of existence. You know, in the most in the broadest sense. Uh, need not coincide with just this syntactic framework. Yeah? So that, uh, <clears throat> let's say, uh, this one, one might say, well, this is a kind of strong <clears throat> Church Turing thesis, you know, but um, uh, that, that, that it need not coincide um, if you, if you uh, take uh, everything into account. And, and this is an issue in metamathematics. Um, I believe that Gödel himself believed that um, there is something beyond, and there is a way of the human uh, mind to go beyond uh, what, what he calls uh, um, the, 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 what, I mean, later on, Samuel Frankel or, or, or Russell Whitehead, Principia Mathematica, you know? Uh, so we are probably able to, to see, to envision more of that, but that is unprovable, really. Uh, this is just a, uh, a, a conjecture. Um, and, and the other answer uh, is a more metaphorical answer. Uh, I like to watch uh, a lot of uh, uh, science science fiction movies, and one science fiction movie is was conceptualized by Sagan. Uh, it's called Context. This is Judy Foster as a scientist who um, who um, kind of um, um, makes contact to an alien civilization, and uh, she plays um, the role of the rationalistic limited uh, to rational science uh, um, character. Um, and there is a priest um, who, um, you might call him a rogue priest, um, who, who um, advises the government. And they have this discussion. 
and, and Judy Foster in the role in her role as a scientist says, well, um, there is uh, Occam's razor. But we don't need God, you know. Uh, we it is just like Laplace, you know. This is this uh, this uh, alleged um, <coughs> um, idea with uh, conversation with Napoleon. You know, Napoleon uh, allegedly said. <coughs> Well, if you have all these celestial mechanics, where do you need God? Uh, and, and Laplace uh, allegedly said, you don't need that hypothesis here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the same, same conversation, a little bit translated, takes place in this movie. Uh, it says uh, uh, that uh, Judy Foster, in your role as a scientist, says, uh, we don't need God because we have all our formalisms and the syntax and so on and so forth. And then, and then the priest, this is, in my opinion, the central scene of this movie, you know? Uh, it, and then the priest asks her, well, did, did you love your father? And, uh, and she said, because the father died of a, I believe of a heart attack, this was, uh, I hope I'm not giving away uh, too much. You should really uh, go and, and see the movie. It's a very nice movie. Uh, and, and she said, yes, I loved my father very much. And then the priest asked, then prove it, you know? So <coughs> there may be something beyond proof. And, and, and in my opinion, uh, I've written a small paper on, on metaphysics uh, of this. this. This was my reaction, actually. It's not a small paper. It's really a large paper. It's in, on the archive. I didn't publish it because probably I develop it into a book, but I hesitate to do that because that would make me even older. So I, I just leave it there, you know. I, I, I think uh, it's age old question starting from Leibniz and Heidegger, you know, uh, the question of existence. Why is there something? It's totally incomprehensible to us, in my, at least to me, you know, I can, I'm totally at the loss of understanding why there is something. And, and realizing that I don't understand this is a humbling experience. And I think we should, um, we should from this kind of humbling experience, um, by an analogy, be very humble when it comes to the so-called un uh, understanding of the world. And, um, and if you would go, I mean, I have, uh, I have listened to uh, to talks by to, to lectures by Feierabend in Berkeley. You know, when I was in Berkeley, uh, Feierabend was there, and 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 he's in a tradition of this kind of um, issue that you don't you you have to take scientists seriously, and they help you sometimes, but sometimes you have to to save science for, to save society from science. You know, to 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 curb it in a in a very personal um, hu hu human way, and and I think this is very very pertinent now in in the situation our our society got. Uh, how, he has a very nice talk. You can look it up in the internet. How to save society from science, you know, uh, and 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 even more so, uh, Lakatos. You know, Lakatos is a philosopher of science. He, he said, uh, we don't know what the future will bring. We don't even know what will be the next progressive research program. There are so many auxiliary theories with, uh, even if you take Popper, you know. Uh, of course, you, there is this demarcation criterion and you can say, well, you can throw out the theory uh, if uh, it is falsified, but there are so many extra criteria. So, so we have to be very humble and very careful in our statements. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, this was a disgrace into that. Um, so I, I, I just would like to point out that there is an aspect of Goal directedness that may have something to do uh, with recursive function theory. And uh, for instance, there exist two. Let, let me just mention what recursive function theory has to offer. That is uh, two uh, very famous in, the, in a certain community, in the logic community, uh, theorems by Professor Specker, Ernst Specker. 
uh, he was in Princeton and he, he was in, in Vienna, he was giving a talk on what Gödel really believed, you know? So he was the, 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 in Vienna, there's this Gödel Society organized by, by logicians uh, and mathematicians and he gave, and everybody thought uh, he would give a talk on Gödel's Plat Platonist uh, field points. But, uh, but actually he, he was very dry, uh, stated two theorems. Um, the first theorem uh, is um, that you can have a, a, a series of computable functions that has no computable limit. So every, every uh, a finite term is, is computable, but, uh, but the limit is not. And for instance, Ch Chaitin's omega is such a function, if you, if you know what Chaitin's omega is. Um, and the second, and the second um, um, uh, theorem uh, Specker developed in Princeton was, well, while he was at Princeton, he was, of course, from the ETH, was um, um, in a compact interval, you have a computable function but this computable function may obtain its extreme point at an uncomputable value. So this is, uh, there, there is a, a paper by Kreisel, a notion of mechanistic theory who discusses this with regards to, phys to, to physics because the Hamiltonian variation principle and so on, uh, this, uh, this is very much in line with that. And, and by, by the way, and then somebody dared to ask, uh, 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 Specker, and I'm, I'm coming uh, because Specker is very, uh, is very uh, much co connected to what I really wanted to talk about to, today. Uh, somebody there to ask Specker, but Professor Specker, uh, why the title? And he said, well, you know, nowadays these titles, you have to give uh, good titles because otherwise nobody would come to the lecture. And, um, and, and, and he gave the following experience. He, he showed uh, to Gödel the results and uh, Gödel stared at him, you know, suspiciously and said, come back in three weeks, you know. And uh, in three weeks, Professor, the then uh, young Professor, uh, Specker knocked on Gödel's door Speck and Gödel said, yes, uh, have, uh, Professor, have you looked at these uh, theorems? And, uh, and Gödel said, yes, I can believe in them. <laughs> so this is, this is why, why uh, Specker, this is typically for, was for his humor, a uh, very nice character. So let's, let's come to another topic uh, of interest uh, of Specker. And this was quantum mechanics, you know. The, the Swiss, uh, starting from 80, I think, 7 or 88, were uh, Pauli returned. I, I think uh, the Swiss kind of got rid of Pauli. Uh, I, I, sh I shouldn't say that when uh, when Zoom is. Uh, but, but somehow, I, I believe, you know, there is a, it's realistic to say that the Swiss tried to get rid of Pauli. They didn't give him Swiss citizenship and he had to go abroad. But he happily returned to Switzerland after a while. Um, and, um, and, and he, one of the first talks, and I have even at eBay, I, I, I got um, um, a Vorlesungsverzeichnis of the ETH, I think of 84, 86 Specker mentions that, where I talked about quantum logic. So they had a seminar of quantum logic. And from there on, the Swiss had a little co uh, cottage industry of, of quantum logic, mm -hmm. I believe, stimulated by, by Pauli. Um, there are very, very, a lot of very good um, uh, Swiss ma mathematicians doing quantum logic related issues, among them Specker. In the Specker theorem, what then became known as the Koch Specker theorem, allegedly was already born in Specker's head. Uh, at, at the end of the summer of 88, uh, uh, 48 or so, or 47, I cannot remember the exact date, uh, after the lecture, right after the lecture. And, um, and basically, uh, what was the issue there? By, by the way, if you want to uh, read 
um, the, 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 the slides of my talk if you want to fetch them, this, this is the place to fetch them. Okay. Um, so let me, how do I, ah, here. Um, the, the starting point of Pauli and um, um, that, that, that Pauli discussed in these lectures was a paper by von Neumann and Birkhoff. Uh, von Neumann had an interest in um, quantum mechanics. It's amazing, you know, that von Neumann, in my opinion, it was amazing, but probably I don't know too much of von Neumann, uh, that, that he was so much interested in physics because he, he wrote a famous book uh, on, on, on foundations of physics based on Dirac's proposition to use Hilbert spaces, that is linear vector spaces uh, endowed with a scalar, pro with an inner product uh, for the formulation of the newly, our, as Born said, our new quantum mechanics, you know, this was in the 20s or so in Germany, uh, uh, that, 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 that came from, um, from uh, Dirac and of course from Schrödinger and from, uh, from Heisenberg. And they, they, the mathematicians uh, based on Dirac's suggestion, you know, of this, uh, this uh, infamous delta function, which the mathematicians then cope after a while with the, um, with, with the distribution theory. Um, he, they, they, were, they were doing then uh, quantum mechanics in terms of Hilbert space. So linear vector spaces endowed with an inner product. And, and everybody was happy, I believe, because they knew this from Hamiltonian mechanics. Yeah? They had these vector spaces, phase spaces was basically this. You know? um, and um, so, so th this was uh, for Neumann's input in Pirkhoff was uh, very, very was versed in, uh, in in algebra in lattice theory and they joined forces and, and developed a kind of um, empirical logic based on the operations of Hilbert space. So so they say instead of set operations that governed uh, Boolean logic, you know, intersect set theoretic intersection, set theoretic union, uh, complementary set. You know, these are these are the, uh, the laws of logic uh, that you can formalize. Bull, Bull did that um, um, in, the, in the previous century, in the, in the 19th century. Uh, they based their new logic in a kind of top-down approach uh, upon Hilbert space entities. So they would say the end is still uh, the subset relation, but the or is the linear span. You know, so that's totally different. The linear span is totally different from, from set theoretic union. Yeah, so if you have two vectors, they form uh, a plane, and, uh, and this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is an in infinite uh, set of uh, all those vectors that are spanned by those two vectors if they are not collinear, of course. Um, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and they say, and the negation, they said here, the, the negation, the logical ne negation was um, the, the complementary space. So all the vectors in a, in a, in a space, given a Hilbert space, and, and you have, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, let, let's say one proposition, the elementary proposition is, was just equivalent to a projection operator, which you can uh, construct from a vector by uh, the Arctic product. I have the feeling that not everybody knows half of the terminology you're using. Ah. Like what is a Hilbert space, what is linear span. Ah. So I think that maybe perhaps a, <laughs> a more illustrative example will, will make uh, sense. Uh, anyway, yeah. yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you for, for this thing. Um, okay, uh, so, so so basically they had new operations that were not the classical operations of, of logic, you know? And, um, and what came out of that was um, that, that somebody says, well, then let's, let's, do, let's do a general search for, for logics that are, are not, um, that are not, um, uh, 
um, uh, classical yacht logics, mm -hmm. because probably there, there are structures in this world that are not classical but, in a traditional sense. Uh, let me, can, may I talk Yes, sure, sure. So there is like uh, the, the interesting difference, it's very, it's not so complicated. There's so many terms that need to be used to, to really explain. But in, in, in set theoretical terms, when you think of the negation, you think of the complementary set. All that is not in my category is outside the category. So in the, in the Hilbert space, you step of, of the, because it's a, it is a sort of geometrical, like, like based on vectors that point in different directions. So you can create a sort of geometry. So you don't have just a set, but you have a sort of geometrical space. So then negation will become uh, the what is orthogonal, what is not in the plane, it's in the other part of the space. Mm -hmm. So, and by linear span, it means the or of this dimension with this dimension, the or will be the whole linear span. And not just the, the or means the union, not just the union of the sets, but the union plus all that can be generated by combining them. So these kind of things change entirely the, 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 the logical results of propositions that you make. So the or means a different thing, the and the adequate logic uh, mm -hmm. uh, emerges from making this shift. And then there were many other, like many there were more wild defining other operations. Yeah. And and one one thing I think probably this is the last thing I, I used up all, almost all of my time. Yeah. Um, so so uh, th there is one thing that is very important in uh, quantum mechanics and in many other non-classical modes of perception that is called uh, complementarity and, and complementarity and then stronger form contextuality but i will not discuss contextuality now in uh, today but complementarity is the following thing you must decide if you are residing inside the system you must decide what to measure because um, there is uh, the, the economic economists would call opportunity costs. Yeah, If you measure something, you cannot measure another thing and vice versa. So you have to decide. Yeah, It's like an opportunity cost in a pandemic. You, know? you can be maximally safe. If you can manage that, you can incarcerate everybody, then you will have no pandemic. Uh, but of course, there are costs that people pay. You know, so it's it's and, and this is uh, the first time the uh, physicists realized this kind of uh, issue uh, was in quantum mechanics in the let's say the quantum mechanics of spin and uh, traditionally it was first uh, um, uh, uh, the, the uncertainty in um, in in the resolution in the uh, experimental resolution of space and and of um, of momentum. Yeah, these were the first uh, complementary um, issues. And, and I have developed, you know, and there have been people um, trying to formalize this. But they were not very happy with the ways the physicists discussed this in terms of Hilbert space. And there, there is a very nice article by Edward Moore, I think in the 50s, who discusses uh, complement who invented the Moore automaton that, that became then a, a business a cottage industry in computer science on their own Moore and Mealy finite state automata just to formalize the notion of complementarity very much as Turing formalized the notion of computability in inventing his Turing machine and um, there, there was in the so I, I became, when I was uh, early, I became interested in um, Moore automata, in Mealy automata and the logic that resulted from that. So let's say if we were living in a computer generated universe in a simulation, we would call it, in a matrix, you know, uh, uh, we would be sub subjected to these kind of issues. And it would feel very similar to quantum mechanics because we would have complementarity first. And how, how, can you, how can you imagine that? And this, this kind of uh, imagining was introduced by Ron uh, Wright. Um, he called it generalized Urn model. So you had an Urn, let, let's say, you had an Urn consisting of four ball types. 
you you label the ball types by one, two, three, and four, and you draw a ball from the womb. And um, but you don't look at it with with a uh, with with the un, uh, with, with just 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 as that. Uh, the, the balls contain, let's say, two symbols, one in green and one in the complementary color red. But you look at it with green and red filters. So that if you would uh, realize the, the green, uh, the, yeah, the ball is, is black background. You, know? uh, you, would, um, uh, you would not see the red ball because the red would mesh with the black background and vice versa. Yeah, so um, if you combine, and, and then if you have, let's say, zeros and ones, I have here little squares, you might say this is a one here, and um, and and uh, little, uh, little circles, you could say this is a zero, you know. Um, you could, you could uh, say if, if you wear uh, the, 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 the red googles, you wouldn't see the green ones. You would just say, well, I see a red and, and um, I see a red one and the red zero, like, like this, you know? Uh, but I wouldn't see these ones. And if you make all the, the possible combinations, which are just four, you know, um, you, you would only be able to see a partition of these fours. So this goes into partition logic, this was my, my contribution to the subject, let's say. So, so you would see only see the partition of all those ball types. And these ball types can be formalized with two, two valued measures. Because it's, anyway, so, um, uh, and, and you would only be able to, to, uh, to realize uh, the, the red observer, but not the green one. And vice versa, if you were a green eyeglass, you would only see the green observables, but not the red ones, yeah? Uh, and you could you could uh, generalize this to more general structures. I have uh, drawn this here. Uh, it's a kind of you know this is there, there should be some kind of um, uh, firefly here, and and this observable you look at it that way maybe here or here, but then you don't know if it's in F or B if you just look from this side, yeah, or. Uh, or if you look from this side, you wouldn't be able to, to look at it from that side, or it may not turn on the light or may, may just uh, say, I'm not, I'm, I'm just turning away from both of you. And then you wouldn't see anything in both cases. And, and this resulted in a kind of complementarity that is even interlinked and this you need for more sophisticated theorems like the coach of Becker theorem. So, uh, and, and I have, uh, the, the, this is realized by five ball types. Yeah, and I have no time to discuss this now. If you're interested, please give me an email and I will send you the exact uh, idea behind that or, or I can explain it to you. So, so basically what you do is you, you take all the, the classically available states, but you have, you, you, uh, you don't look at it in the way in a, in a way that is unfiltered, you know? Of, of course, if you don't be an eyeglass, you would see everything, yeah? But if you put on the eyeglass, you, you see certain aspects of the issue, but then you have the opportunity cost of losing the other aspect. And this, be, this can be uh, generalized in terms of, of partitions of sets. Um, and, um, and, and it gives you some impression that um, this is uh, that 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 the, that there are experiences um, and, and systems in nature in system science that have this property that they show complementarity. And once they show complementarity, you you have to take that into account. So this is an, an another important aspect of, um, of, of system science that may be relevant here. And with that, I think uh, my time is over and I close. Yeah. I hope I haven't confused you uh, too much. Uh,
but yeah, it's an it's an ongoing business. But uh, I, one thing I wanted to say, uh, this the this Poincaré, uh, um, Poincaré recurrent theorem and um, the the Loschmidt um, um, Umkehr einwand. Uh, this is uh, this this has a new form of discussion now in quantum mechanics um, has been already discussed in von Neumann's book in the in the 20s and the 30s that uh, that uh, that I have mentioned already uh, and then uh, went very popular with um, with Everett and with uh, with Wittner um, because um, the question is if you have um, a, un, uh, a uniform unitary evolution of the wave function, how could you construct a measurement out of that? Because as Thomas mentioned, you can have this nesting kind of thing. You know? And the, the question is, what is a measurement? And I believe, and there's, there's been mentioning this ship of uh, the ship. The question is, what is an object? Yeah. I, I think there's a pertinent question. Nobody has uh, yet. I, I, uh, I have something in my mind, but I have so many things in my mind. And so sometimes I use this as an excuse not, not to do it, you know. But, the no, but one has to, has to make precise the notion of what an object is. I don't think that in physics there exists a good notion of an object. And for instance, I just just to push things harder, uh, Scully and others, and then Zeilinger measured and others measured this. Uh, they they suggested to undo a measurement, and it's just a question of cost. I think the physics community, if you press them hard, they would say there is no elementary bound of reconstructing the wave function of undoing the measurement. You have to invest the, all the information you got. You have to lose information. You have to, uh, Shimoni calls it unthink. Unthink, you know, this is. Uh, and if you unthink, uh, you lose the information, but you get the original state, it, it, but there is no measurement any longer. So so also it's, it's very similar to statistical <coughs> physics and the notion of measurement, the case into thing, yeah. It's, uh, and this is related to the notion of an object, what physicists call an object. I think objects are only definable with the present means uh, for all practical purposes. Assuming that entropy goes high. Entropy. Yeah, and, and also the increase of entropy is also fat mm. for all practical purposes. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so questions? We have time for a few questions. I need a clarification because I, I, I have very uh, minimal knowledge of physics, but I can understand the things that you're talking about more or less. But what lacks to me I, is the underlying intuition. So how do you relate this to, to, to the question of uh, the composing of circular direction? Can you go back to that? Because I lost the the, what was guiding you here? So can you, can you make it explicit again to me? Because maybe it's obvious for the others. What you just yes. Said. No, I, I think your impression was totally justified. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to push on you. I have not thought about this. Uh, or I, I, has, I, I think, so, sorry, I, 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 this makes me think that if someone told me one day that uh, uh, biological organization and this kind of things is a, is a, is a phenomenon so rare in the universe that physicists can safely just ignore it. <laughs> Something like that. So, the, <laughs> so no, no, no. I, I think. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, at some point, I think it's it's more rational and to be humble, uh, not to push things on people. Yeah, and. and to to kind of present oneself, I shouldn't say naked, but uh, <laughs> you know, just just to say what one knows and what one doesn't know, and to discuss things because this opens up then uh, uh, new roads of, of of development instead of just presenting this as an ad hoc 
solution. You know, I I tend to think I, I was at this other Templeton grant. We had uh, we had a very famous uh, biologist there, and and I, I think there exists now MIT or Harvard. There, there is one. I, I had actually the same idea. And later discovered that that he was yeah. uh, promoting this. Yeah. That that you that in order to 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 get more energy, you have to develop a brain basically. Yeah, because yeah. it's very effective to develop brains. And so on and so forth. So, so all kinds of very interesting ideas uh, develop, but one has to keep in mind that this is the case. The, the problem is, you know, uh, people present you their formalisms, and then they say this is the solution. You know, and and this is, you know, this, in my opinion, this is. Uh, I'm old enough to 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 now say this. You know, this is this is sinful. <laughs> Yeah, because because it confronts people uh, with the idea that you know uh, very much, and whereas you don't know much. You know, this is this is like like Goethe said, uh, those who is uh, most slave, who, who thinks he is free and is not. You know, so so, so this is so, sometimes it's much better to state certain aspects of the story, and uh, so that one. Uh, can go on uh, developing things based on these aspects, but I have no final theory of everything. You know, it's no. it's just I, I'm just saying, uh, for instance, in, in this Poincaré, you know, um, uh, this current theorem Poincaré was a total loss, uh, realizing that this current theorem may be subject to uh, recursive analysis. Uh, because uh, um, the recursive uh, recurrence theorem becomes uncomputable. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's just not valid yeah, any longer. Oh, we can discuss in the, the point, but yeah. I think it's clear the, the idea that you were presenting some some flashes on you. Yes. And not an integrated uh, discourse. No, no, I have no. Uh, Go, please. If I may, you somehow escape my question because what I was asking is what is your intuition? I, I did not so what 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 when you think of propositiveness, what comes to your mind? That's what well, like to, to, to my to my mind comes is that our idealizations are conveniences. We talk, for instance, of, of uh, the real numbers, you know. This is this is totally unoperational. This is totally and if but but if you want the Bridgman was somebody who made this op who insisted on operationalism. And I know Seilinger who insists on operationalism, but operationalism fails as well, you know. Uh, so I'm uh, my intuition is that one has to be very careful. Most of our models are just uh, in uh, are just uh, conveniences. Yeah. Uh, and one has to be very careful uh, in co uh, not to confuse the model with with the real world, you know. Uh, and one has to be very humble. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's clear. It's clear. I, I think it's it's opening up for extremely open and wide. So please, Peter. So uh, no, I, uh, I, it's okay. I, I wanted maybe to add a little bit more to connect it to the other hypothesis. Yeah. I wanted to say the same that what I think he's trying to say is models are not reality. No, no model, however sophisticated its logic and its mathematics and so on, is the reality. It always captures only a part. You cannot capture the whole. But when you spoke about there not being a clear idea of objects, I think the notion of object is itself already a model that is very reductionistic because it's assumed that there is something that just stays there and that just is there. Exactly. And what quantum mechanics shows is that whatever there is, the moment you want to know what it is, it changes, it does something, and you don't know exactly what it's going to do. And the connection with goal directedness maybe is we are looking at autonomous systems. That means systems that are self-determining, as you call it. And self-determining systems will have this quantum property, you might say, even more. Because you want to know what the autonomous system is doing or what it is or what properties it has, that means you need to perturb it and it will react in some way. But the reaction of the system is mostly internal. You cannot make a model of the autonomous system that will tell you exactly how it will react precisely because it has all this internal complexities, this autonomies, and the complementarity then is that, yeah, 
you can only measure certain properties at certain moments, but if you don't measure it again at another moment, it will be something else. And that is intrinsic to quantum system, but it's even more intrinsic, I would say, to autonomous systems like biological systems. Like the classical example, you want to know how, uh, let's say, uh, uh, what is the anatomy of a system. And let's say before the days of X-rays, you had to cut open the animal. And obviously what you see is no longer a, a functioning system. Now we have some indirect methods, but these indirect methods, they will also uh, perturb the system. So whatever you see will not be the system as it works independently of your observation. You know, it's it's a little bit like trial and error. Be humble. Uh, try as hard as you can, but always, but always keep in mind that these are just models. You know, yeah. be careful. <laughs> yeah. More questions? Can, can, can I have? Can I ask questions? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Me? Yes. Ah, ah, great. Great, great. Well, thank you very much, first of all, for this uh, for this talk, uh, which really can you understand me? Yes, I can. Yes, thank you. Ah, ah okay. Um, uh, thank you very much for this talk because I hear such uh, distortions. Is, is it my voice? Uh, probably you. Uh, we don't hear distortions. Uh, it's it's okay if I if I. If I dedicate my boy, my ear to to the laptop, I hear you very well. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, so just just go on. <laughs> okay. Um, I have three questions. Two questions of understanding. Um, one question: What what Thomas said, the the or in in uh, quantum logic is combining of the planes. Did I understand this right? No. In, in quantum logic, the combined the or the or is the linear span. The or is the linear oh, span. Mm -hmm. Okay, linear span. Okay, and um, the second question is the what is what I can see now on the screen. You said when you look from at it from different angles, and I couldn't see what you were showing on the uh, on the screen. Uh, the uh, so. With the mouse ah, great. The yeah. ah, well, here, if, if you look uh, from the bottom up, uh, you will see this observable that's in the left or on the right, that, that the firefly is some, somewhere in the left or in the right part of this panel. Yeah. But you cannot see if it's okay. on the bottom or, or on the, if it's on the bottom or on the top. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So, and, and, and vice versa. So you have to make choices. Of course, I mean, if, ah. you're like, yes, if you're a classical observer, you just open the box and then you see everything. You know? <laughs> but but, but in, and in quantum mechanics, you don't have that possibility. In classical physics, you still have, you know, you can build, I, I once suggested on this model to, to do uh, under quotes, uh, quantum cryptography with the chocolate balls. You know, I even staged that in Vienna uh, because no, nobody would uh, allow me to make a, a crypt analytic attack. So I invented this uh, chocolate ball model. Um, uh, but but of course the chocolate balls. You, you can you can make this uh, with chocolate balls. You know, you, you have nice chocolate balls. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, but uh, you know, in quantum mechanics, you cannot just put off the the the, the googles, the, the the filters. In classical yeah. physics, you can, yeah. Or at the moment, you cannot. At the moment, you cannot. I I believe in yeah. principle yeah. you cannot. But uh, but this is another. But this is a belief, you know. So so uh, you restrict yourself either to this observable or exclusively. Uh, to that observable and vice versa, and, and you get two kinds of kind of objects or aspects of the object. Yeah. Yeah. And in classical yeah. physics, you can have right. it all. In quantum mechanics, uh, at least at the moment, you cannot. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. And my last question is: Yeah. Um, you you said if. Um, um, uh, 
if we have a goal, I, 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 I made this notation. If we have a goal that is purely syntactic, it may not be computable. Um, my question is, where comes the, the, the semantics in then, the, the, um, the, the meaning at, at this uh, point? The, the meaning uh, from syntax. Oh, this is a too difficult question for a humble physicist. Yeah. Is my yeah. the, the, <laughs> the, the, the semantics from the syntax, you are asking, what, what, what is it, artificial intelligence? You are asking strong artificial <laughs> intelligence. Yeah. OK. Um, Great. Thank you, Christian. Um, we are thank you. trying to, thank you, to, for stick, to stick to the, to the schedule. So we thank again uh, Professor Stossi for his talk. Thank you. Um, and I will cut the recording. So we go on a coffee break, but please don't stand up yet because uh, I just find out the thing for the tickets. And so 